think you, to some degree, write what you like. Um, and I like books that shift time. I like books that um, shift characters. I like books that um, move around. I started it before Enron. Um, all these Ponzi schemes have come up, and um, that has been maybe good for the book, but uh, in terms of getting attention for it. But uh, I wrote it before Enron, and I remember when I wrote it, I was thinking that these the scam I'd come up with and the whole system and the scheme that I came up with was just unbelievable and I just pushed way too far and uh, when Enron came out I thought well I didn't push far enough he has created this lie that he didn't mean to create um, he created it because not because he wanted to get rich but because he wanted to do something big he wanted to do something um, exceptional and from there I just created my own system um, that crossed the line from pushing for profit into um, something completely um, unethical and illegal and wrong. And as I wrote and created in my mind this technical um, Ponzi scheme, um, I needed a way to fund it within the you know narrative of the book. How, did, how are these people working on this system and being employed? So. Uh, there had to be a financial scam that went with it. I think that that's what the book's about as much as anything is his relationships to the friends and the people who work for him. Um, and so there's a part of the book that, that captures that, that captures um, cutbacks and layoffs and, and the culture of a company that is having to retract and the pain that people feel, um, the very personal pain that they feel and go through when they have to retract. On some level, you know, if you think about it, a whole lot of the dot-com companies were Ponzi schemes. Um, constantly get new investors, um, you know, show no profit whatsoever, um, uh, or well, experience no profit whatsoever, which is different, and get new investors. And as long as those new investors kept walking in the front door, it didn't matter what was going out the back door. I think, these people who cheat investors or um, cheat their employees are awful and they, you know, um, should go to jail. I mean, they should be convicted. Um, businesses inherently uh, pushing the edge of what's okay and what's ethical. That, that's, I think, just you're trying to maximize your profits and that's what you're going to do. So much of the book was from Robbie's perspective. It was Robbie's take. It was Robbie's view. Um, it was Robbie's experience literally in the building. And um, to break out of that somewhat, just when I was writing, I thought I wanted to write from the perspective of the friends, of the people who work for him. And just little bits, um, little moments of their perspective. And what they do. People ask, you know, uh, do you write with an outline? Do you write with a plan? I, I really don't, um, which is, you know, perhaps frightening. But a job I used to have, I uh, we were raising money, raising venture capital, and are attempting to. And um, I used to say that I had an MFA. Uh, that in the meetings they would ask you what your background is and what you, where you came from, and where you went to school. And I would say I had an MFA. Say, oh, an MBA. I said, no, I, I said an MFA. And they said, oh. I said, uh, MBA. I mean, whatever you want to hear. And, you know, there was real truth to that that the um, investors at that time uh, heard what they wanted to hear.